I used to think that life would be a perfectly told story, that there would be a hopeful beginning, a rich middle, and a golden sunset end, that it would be a linear narrative with a nice build that would start after all of the characters had been introduced, and that build would start a third of the way in after hitting the first obstacle, it would crescendo through the next third and veer through a dramatic turning point, sliding into grand realization and release, a world transformed, represented by some metaphoric horizon line. Of course, that has not been my experience at all. Life is messy, right? And it has not been perfectly told in any way. I could easily blame my grandmother for this misconception. She gifted me with a love of stories. My Russian grandmother, we called her Bobby for short, for Babushka. She would sit by our pillows, and as my, as my brother and I laid in our beds, she would weave these incredible magical folk tales where anything was possible. And as I got older, those stories changed. They shifted. They became about our family history. And I found out amazing things. There were the stories about my grandmother as a baby in Russia. Her family split, running from the Bolsheviks. Half ran towards Turkey, the other half ran towards China. They were never reunited again. The story of my grandmother falling in love in Manchuria with my grandfather, a Japanese supply soldier, and their son my uncle as a baby in Manchuria, my grandmother throwing her body on top of him to get in the way of a Chinese soldier to save him, the story of their life in Japan. Four mixed-race children to care for, she chose to be a dressmaker by day and a black market trader by night. <laughs> the story of my mother coming to America at the age of 20, sponsored by Captain Smith, my grandmother's black market trade partner. She waved goodbye to her family, getting on this cargo ship, going thousands of miles away at a time when goodbyes were final. Because America was far away from Japan, as the moon feels to me now. And she came all the way here to go to nursing school in Wisconsin. <laughs> I left New York without a job or a place to live, but I came to San Francisco, a little different. So here I am, and it is only now, as a theater director, a storyteller in my own right, that I realize that my grandmother's tales were more than a passing on of history. They were a passing on of meaning. Every time she told a tale from our family history, her meaning was this, that every end is a new beginning, and what you value is measured by what you risk. She spent a lifetime starting over and over, risking for her family, for me, and if she hadn't told me those stories, I wouldn't have known about risk and starting over, and I probably wouldn't have had the courage to be a theater director, because my path here has not been straight, and it has not been easy. I miss my grandmother. She died about nine years ago, and I realize that if I don't tell her stories, then she will fade. So, this is the story of a young girl, Min Li. She journeys all the way across China, to ask the old man of the moon how she can change her family's fortune. She battles tigers, she recovers from a poisonous uh, wound, and she climbs a mountain to reach him, only to realize that courage and thankfulness are the answers that she seeks. And <laughs> Does that story sound familiar? <laughs> how about this one? Desperate to reimagine herself after slogging through her well-paid, soulless corporate desk job. A young woman leaves home to travel around the world because why take baby steps? She arrives at her first destination, Japan, when two planes hit two towers. Stuck, all the flights grounded, 
And I knew in that moment that I had to figure out what I loved and how I could spend my life doing that. Every end is a new beginning. And so I came back to the States, I lived off my remaining savings, and with just my last month's rent left, I found an organization that used theater to teach young people about empathy and healthy living and why theater matters. Educational theater programs, theater that made a difference for real. It was such an incredible time, and it was really, really rewarding. I remember this one time. Two parents approached me. They had just witnessed a play, and they were very cautious because they realized that they were in a relationship that was supporting domestic violence. That's a huge realization. And I was able to help them that evening. I returned home, and the worst part of it was I remembered that it was Bobby's birthday, and I had forgotten to call her again. You see, the thing that I love about theater is what I hate about life. It ends. Every time you make a play, you get a group of people together, you rehearse for five weeks, and you make this transformative thing, audiences come to witness it, and then that unique moment fades. It is lost forever, just like right here, right now. And that is what makes it valuable. The thing that I hate about theater is that it has made me miss a lot of my life. Because every time you come together to make a play, you rely on each other so much that you pretty much live together to make it breathe at all. And I have missed so many family weddings, births, birthdays, really important moments, the simple beauty of living a life. And I lost that birthday call along with countless others. I missed Bobby. I like to think she was with me, though, <laughs> when I got to witness Sir Ian McKellen, Gandalf, and Sir Patrick Stewart in rehearsal, very close in distance to how we are now at Berkeley Repertory Theater, and when I got to witness the making of American Idiot, the musical, with Michael Mayer and Green Day, when I got to witness Tony Kushner and hear him thread eight incredibly complicated thoughts together for his play, The Intelligent Homosexual's Guide to Capitalism and Socialism with a Key to the Scriptures. <laughs> yeah, that was the title. <laughs> and when I got to witness and just cry with joy at the Broadway opening night for In the Next Room or the Vibrator play, I had helped to bring that to life as an assistant director on its way to the Great White Way. Talk about a 16-year-old's dream come true. And none of that would have been possible if I hadn't started over yet again. You see, I spent a couple years at educational theater programs, and I hit an artistic ceiling. But I was like, how can I change? I can't leave, right? So I remember going to dinner with my parents to tell them that I was thinking about leaving my job. The job that I had started over for, the one that I had left my corporate, well-paid job for, right? And my parents, who've been incredibly supportive of me my whole life, they looked at me very seriously, and they said, I think you should keep your job. <laughs> Gosh. As a first-generation American, these thoughts just kept going through my head. Your grandparents and parents risked everything to come to this country to provide you with opportunities that they never had, along with the version of my grandmother throwing her body on top of my uncle to save him, and my mother coming to America on the ship thinking she would never see her family again. And then I thought, did they risk all of this for us? for social and financial mobility, hmm, or for the ability to fulfill dreams. Hmm. 
What you value is measured by what you risk. And so I left my job. <laughs> I started over. And four days before my wedding, I found out that I had been awarded the Brett C. Hart Directing Fellowship at Berkeley Repertory Theater, along with a $400 monthly stipend. <laughs> Uh, I remember that sinking feeling of borrowing money for the first time to pay my rent after seven years, realizing I couldn't take care of myself anymore. That was hard. And being the first one in my family to go on unemployment, and almost breaking up with my husband because I spent two weeks straight at the theater, barely making it home for Christmas and for New Year's. And yet, that was the most fulfilling decision that I ever made. Have you ever been faced with a moment of risk? Risk and courage are a core part of my work now. They're an essential part of being an artist. And every time a playwright makes a play or a creative team comes together to bring that new narrative to life, it is an incredibly vulnerable act. You see, we are throwing ourselves consciously and unconsciously into a moment of possible failure, of judgment in the flesh. And as generative artists, we are deeply connected to what we create. It is not some task. It is not some product. It is a part of ourselves. And when an audience comes in to witness that making, it is a sacred act. It is an action of risk. And without courage, there is no risk without risk. There is the art that suffers. Because there is lack of innovation and heart and lack of a deeper imagination just like life. And just like today, this talk today, it was suggested to me that I need to risk a part of myself and lay it on the line. Well, here I am. And for all these experiences, my art is richer. For moving thousands of miles away from home, for leaving my corporate job, to pursue my dreams, and standing in front of you today, terrified. <laughs> and at every turn, it influences my worldview, whether it's the story of a mother who is fighting a town to save it from destroying itself, or the story of a daughter who sacrifices herself to save her nation from the nihilism of war, or whether it's the story of two women who must join together to fight the creeping hunger of institutional racism. My art is now my activism. And guess what? Several months ago, I left my job again. <laughs> I left my job as an artistic associate at one of the top regional theater companies in the country to become the artistic director of a small and mighty indie theater company called Crowded Fire in San Francisco. What you value is measured by what you risk. And my family risked so much to get me here. And it is my turn to do so for others. Because it is time for me to step into an artistic leadership role where I am carrying that sense of activism with me. And at Crowded Fire, we will risk. We will create space for the courageous artist. We will share their diverse perspectives, which is not often heard. And also, we will make art that is supremely theatrical and challenging and that has a deeper meaning. And as I look back at my most recent new beginning, and think about how messy my life has been. I am happy and fulfilled and scared <laughs> because if life was a perfect linear narrative, it would be boring. 
And because I carry and honor my grandmother's spirit, each day I draw breath, each day I walk forward with courage, creativity, and optimism, I carry her with me. And even though I can't have my own family, I risk for the generation to follow. That is the path that I choose. So, what is your story? What will you risk? How will you bring meaning to your life? Thank you.